Joe Neville and welcome to video 2 in my series BGP in depth. In this video we're going to be looking at BGP peering sessions. In the last video uh, we configured an eBGP session so here I'm going to look at iBGP and also going to be addressing a question I see people ask when they configure BGP sometimes especially when looking to run BGP in a data center as part of a leaf spine network and that is does BGP need an IGP? I get the impression that it's just an accepted model, especially with iBGP, that people, they put their IP addressing on their leaf spine nodes, they turn on OSPF, and then they run BGP over the top of it. Well, the answer is no. BGP doesn't need an IGP underneath it. It just needs a route to the peer address. So it's not the IGP itself, it's the function that the IGP is performing that's required. Now that may seem simple, but I find that with all the complexity of BGP, it's always good to grasp onto these basic principles because those are our safety net, those are our support when we're configuring more uh, complex networks, when things go wrong and we're not sure what's uh, going on, uh, we can't explain certain behaviours or the session is not coming up, it's always good to go back to these basic principles and just t tick all of those off. Here is the network that I previously configured, so three VSRs. I'll show you how to set this up in my in video one, so if, if you haven't watched that, please do. Now I've slightly adapted it for this session. What we're going to be looking at is we are looking at the VSR 101 to VSR 102. As you can see, they are both in the same AS, so this is going to be an iBGP session. Now in the previous video for the eBGP, we just had this single link and it was using this directly connected um, interfa interfaces. For the peering session, we used each end of this slash 30. Now that means that the BGP session is tied to a single interface, but what if you had multiple routes between the two devices as we have here with within this AS we've got two links so we don't want to tie our BGP session to one of these interfaces because if it goes down then the BGP session will drop even though there's an alternative route between the devices so it's common practice with iBGP if we've got multiple routes to use a loopback and tie our BGP sessions to the loopback and then use that for the peering session so that if one of these directly connected interfaces goes down there's the alternative route between the other loopback so this is what we're going to configure ibgp between these two loopbacks here we have two putty ssh sessions into my vsrs so vsr 101 and 102 i've configured the ip addressing for the the additional link so it's this link and it's this additional link that I've added and I've already got the loop back on there look on the other end VSL 102 it's this one and this one okay so we need to configure our BGP peer sessions between the loop backs we'll do that on VSL 101 And with BGP, you don't need to put in any special flags or any uh, keywords to say that it's an iBGP session or an eBGP session. The BGP process knows that because it's in the same AS or it's in a different AS for eBGP. Then we need to go into the address family and enable. OK. So to save time, I've already done that on this end. As you can see, peer 1.1.1.1, and I've enabled it. Now, that session is not ready to come up. So there's an additional point that's needed for this. That's because there's multiple interfaces that can be the source for the BGP session. So we need to tell it what is the connect interface. So this is an additional step if you're using a non-directly connected interface. And the 
command is peer and then the peer IP address connect interface and the interface that we're going to use, which is the loopback. Okay, so the BGP is configured, but there's an additional step. We can't ping. You must remember that the loopback is a non-directly connected interface, so the router is not necessarily going to know how to get to it. So this is the function that I was talking about that the IGP would normally fulfill. So if you're turning on OSPF, the OSPF process would be advertising the loopbacks we would expect and BGP would be able to build its sessions across that. So it's a very simple process that's going on there. BGP just needs to be able to hit that peer set statement IP address. So we can turn on OSPF, but for a small one like this, we can do it, we can take alternatives. We just need a route. So what we can do is we can put in a static route. So we'll do a ping sourced from my loop back here to the other loop back. Now we can go let's check. And we can see that we're established. We've been up for 20 seconds. I'm not saying that static routes are the way forward. I'm just using those to merely il illustrate the fact that you don't need a, an IGP. Obviously, static routes have their own drawbacks because they don't scale. You probably don't want to be configuring lots of static routes on your devices. But then turning on an IGP in a large network is not a trivial thing to do. You've got to think about the burden upon your devices of turning on the IGP, essentially just to transport and loop back addresses for the BGP peering sessions. There's pros and cons to the different approaches. What I merely wanted to show you is that BGP doesn't need an IGP underneath it. To recap then, iBGP, it's common practice to use a loop back for your BGP peer sessions, but remember that your router needs a route to the destination. So it needs a route in its routing table to the destination peer address. But also if you're using loopbacks, you need to designate the source interface with the peer connect interface command, as we've seen. But what about eBGP? Well, you can run eBGP between loopback addresses. It just needs a route, like iBGP, to the BGP peer destination address in the statement. But it's atypical to run an IGP between an AS. So you wouldn't normally run OSPF between two ASs. The standard model with BGP would be that you controlled one AS and you ran your OSPF or your IS or RIP within that AS and then you used BGP to peer with a third party that ran another IGP in their AS and it was BGP that spanned across the WAN between these two ASs. Now we do see this kind of behavior change though and it becomes more popular to run an IGP between ASs if you're running BGP in the data center and you're using eBGP for example between your leaf and your spine so in this case people are using an IGP between those two so the standard model for if you wanted to run eBGP between loopbacks would be that you would always use a static route to point out across the WAN. The principle there that I've already discussed is the same. You just need a route somehow between the source and the destination for the BGP peer statement. But also with eBGP, where this differs from iBGP, is that eBGP always assumes that there's only going to be one hop between the 
local speaker and the remote speaker so it will not be looking it will it will not be looking for devices that are more than one hop away so you need to change this behavior because if you think you've got the connection one hop to the device and then another hop to its loopback if you want to run this between the loopbacks so you have to turn on an, a new command so this is a peer the ip address of the peer ebgp max hop and you have to set that to over one you can set that to two and you'll be able to peer between the loopback so you put this on both ends i'll show you that now what i'm going to do then is move my this ebgp session which is directly connected and it's just one hop as you can see i'm going to change that so that it moves this ebgp session goes from this loopback on vsr 101 and it goes to loopback 3.3.3.3 so if you think that's one hop then it would be one two to hit the loopback here are my two party sessions vsr 101 201 go into bgp this this so it's this peering statement that we need to alter take that off so you see it go down Connect interface, loopback zero, EBGP max hop, so this is a special command. There you can see the configuration. So I take that one off. Enable that. And you can see the whole configuration. Now, what's missing? There's no IGP running across this. There's no static routes. It's not directly connected. So we do not have a route. I'm not going to be able to ping the opposite loopback. Okay. So again, I just put in a static. And it's come up straight away okay so I hope you found that useful we were looking at BGP peering sessions and just looking at the fact that BGP doesn't need an IGP underneath it but it does need a route to the destination for the peer session if you like this video please like comment subscribe especially comment if you want to see other aspects of BGP I'd like to make these sessions interactive but that's all for now my name's Joe Neville, thanks for watching and goodbye.